Good evening and welcome to our service tonight. We've just had the All Souls service and remember the lives of those who are now with God and living and rejoicing with their life. So we come now to look at our own life and today to look at the real call on our lives. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let's begin by bringing our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, plans the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Now let us rejoice in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the colic prayer for this service. O God, in whom to follow is to risk our whole life. As Ruth and Naomi loved and held to one another, abandoning the way of the past, so may we also not be divided, but travel together onto that strange land where you will lead us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the days... When the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab. He and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of their two sons, his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the women, woman was left without her two sons or her husband. Then she started so that the women 
Then she started to return with her daughter-in-laws from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had had consideration for his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughter-in-laws, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughter-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband, tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they had were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death <coughs> parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> the psalm for tonight is Psalm 146. Found on page 377. Let us read it together. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. While I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in flesh and blood, which cannot say. For when their breath goes from them, they return again to the earth. And on that day all their thoughts perish. Blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, the God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who deals justice for those that are oppressed. The Lord gives food to the hungry and sets the captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those that are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger in the land. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. As for the way of the wicked, 
he turns it upside down. For the Lord shall be king forever. For your God, O Zion, shall reign through all generations. Praise the Lord. The second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9, beginning at verse 11. But when Jesus came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with human with hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For it, if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more with the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God. Purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new con covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. Hear the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. Please go send him for the gospel. It's the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark, chapter 12, beginning at the 13th verse. Lord, Glory Lord, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Then they sent to him some Pharisees, some Herodians, to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one. For you are not regarded, you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them? Or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they bought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength. And to love one's neighbour as oneself. 
This is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips, the meditation of our hearts, be yours acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In today's reading, we see the religious people trying to trap Jesus by bringing a social issue which was a problem. The people were under duress because they were paying taxes. Now, where does religion meet state? Is religion more important than state? Or is state more important than religion? This is the question. And they thought they were putting him in a position because, oh, well, by God, I'd say no, but you get in trouble with the car state, oh gee, I don't want to get into trouble with the state, oh gee, what will I, will I do? So his answer is amazing because he avoided their trap altogether. They're not related at all. It's not a competition. It's not, oh, the state and the religion, which one do I choose? I live in the world. I live in the world. I obey the laws. I do what the world requires of me to be part of the society and to live in peace with the people of the society. Now, if those laws are contrary, and they're not really contrary to my faith, usually they're an act of faith, not an act of state. There are none of my laws that require me to kill anybody, as far as I know. There's no requirements for me to defraud or take from another person. There is no law that says I shouldn't pay tax. What God wants is God's. And what God wants is spirit. So there's a point at which there is nothing in this world that is contrary to God and his state. He goes on to talk about the law. He's testing. And there's an interesting interaction here. Because the scribe comes and asks him what the important law is. And he brings out the two laws of Deuteronomy. Now, you've heard this probably before, from me before, but I like to remind people that the Ten Commandments, there are over 300 laws, by the way, in the Old Testament. Uh, sorry, take that back, there are over 600. 300 plus are things you cannot do and 200 are things that you need to do. So... Out of these 600 laws, the Jewish people bring it down to 10. The 10 are, love the Lord your God, uh, there is only one God, there is, don't use the Lord's name in vain, don't make idols, keep the Sabbath, honour your parents. Now those five are about honouring God. And the next five are about honouring people. Don't kill them, don't steal from them. Don't lie to them. Don't uh, have a relationship with their wives and don't want what they've got. Now, in all these things are summed up in the two laws of Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God and love your neighbour. So you don't have to remember the ten, you just have to remember the first five are about loving God and the second five are about loving people. So Jesus brings up these two laws. And the scribe says something that even he is at risk of being on the bad side of his people because he says all this is more important than the sacrifices. How dare you say that? That they don't sacrifice. That's a taboo word, don't sacrifice. So here he is. Jesus sees in this man that he has gone past his faith of his culture 
And now he's looking at his faith in line with his God. We see in Hebrews, and one thing we need to remember as we read Hebrews, it was written for them to talk to people who came from a sacrificial relationship with God. They understood purification through the giving of an animal that would cleanse them from their guilty conscience and get God's forgiveness. So when we read it and say, well, that's barbaric, of course it's barbaric to us. We're not Hebrews. We didn't come out of it in a sacrificial culture. We don't have to be convinced that sacrificing is not necessary. But we still need the same understanding that they do. And that is, we still need Christ's sacrifice. I talked about that all last week. So we talk about how God gives us the opportunity to be free from our mistakes and our sins. Now let's get to the next part, which is today's. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Your mind, your heart, your soul, and your strength. This is the great and first command. Wait a minute. God wants me to go out and help the poor. First, he wants you to love him with every part of your being. Do you love God with every part of your being? Now, I want to give you, and I've said it during the week, because I came with a poem, even before I read the readings for this week, even before I came to the services during the week, I came with a poem that I created, that I felt God was speaking to me. I said to God, what should I do? God said, love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I said, but God, who should I help? God said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I said, but God, where should I go? God said, Love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I said, God, why? He said that you may love your neighbour as yourself. You see, the second law is only fulfilled in the first. Our acts are drawn out of our relationship with God. If we do not love God with our whole being, we cannot truly love our neighbours as ourselves. Because if I love my neighbour as myself and I think that I'm a worthless person, then I can love them as a worthless person. And how do you love a worthless person? You don't, because they're worthless. If I'm an angry person, I can love my neighbour as myself because I'm angry, so I can be angry with him. I love my neighbour as myself. I'm angry with me, I'm angry with them. To love our neighbours as ourselves is not really as important as how we feel loved by God. So here's the question. Not... How many people have you saved this week? Not how many people have you shared the gospel with this week? One question. How much do you love God? Because all the rest will flow from it.
We come now to reaffirm the acts of God to show his love to us through our creed. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, true God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the world, the church, for ourselves. At the end of each prayer, I will say, God, our God, in your mercy, the response is hear our prayers. God our Creator, you made the heavens and the earth, and all that is in them is your own. Hear the prayers we bring for your people. God our freedom, we pray for all who live in bondage. Teach us how to unbind the captive, to bring justice to those who are oppressed, so that your people shall be our people. God, our God, in your mercy. God, our peace. We pray for all in places of conflict or war. Teach us how to resolve our disputes, to live in harmony with one another, so that your people shall be our people. God our God, in your mercy. God, our welcome, we pray for all who are alienated and rejected. Teach us how to open our arms to the friendless, to offer hospitality to the stranger, so that your people shall be our people. God, our God, in your mercy. God, our hope. We pray for all who are in trouble or distress. Teach us how to heal the wounded, to bring comfort to the sad. We bring those we hold in our hearts who are in need of your healing.
We bring special prayers for Kerry Rolfe, Michelle Aldridge, Marcel Hadley, Claire Jula, Hoesh Lapoisa, Anne Howe, Baby Odin, Peter Tranter, Brett, Bill Henderson, Kenneth and Peter Tordeman, Oliver, God our God, so that your people may shall be our people. God our God, in your mercy. God our salvation, we pray for all who are members of our church. By your grace, rescue the lost and increase in us our love for you so that we may be your people and you may be our God. God, our God, in your mercy. God, our promise, we remember those who have died in your love. All who have loved you with heart and mind and soul and strength. We remember those of our lives. We remember those of this parish whose anniversary of death for this week. For Alan Kavanagh, Kenneth Day, Andrew Flowers, Clinton Benny, Catherine Smith, David Olus, George Grout, Ernest Sands, Thelma Best, Ephemia Usi. Help us to follow the example of your saints and bring us home to your eternal presence so that we may enter into the inheritance that you prepare for all your people. God, our God, in your mercy. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the Lord is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now prepare for our confession through the prayer of humble access. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. The merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be outstanding for the greeting of peace. We come to love the Lord our God with every part of ourselves and with each other. We are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. Peace and love of the Lord be always with you. Always with you. Thank you so much. You may sing or you may listen. Our offertory hymn is Him ADA, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You.
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks in Christ. All glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who, by the power of your Spirit, was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Satan or Neil. First of all, God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, that we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do, as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself and once for all upon the cross. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate this bread and this cup is one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son. And bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Gifts of God, 
people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us. Feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Christ keep me eternal life. Blood of Christ keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Bountiful God, at this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. We, who have seen the greatness of your love, see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all your saints forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. To send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Thank you for coming tonight and sharing this journey with God. May uh, the rest of the week may it follow you. Please be able to for the blessing. Don't fall into the world in peace. Be of good courage and hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak, help the afflicted. Give honour to all. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless you.
Mas o Dor o ódio na palavra da nação, na alma e espírito e a mão de Deus na mãe de Deus. Amém. E ao entrar em Jesus, a palavra de Deus. Amém. 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 Am